Hello and welcome back. Sorry about the delay, but I have to balance time between working on the new release for Pixel 2D and making these tutorials. Hopefully I'll manage to put this out a bit more consistently going forward. So let's recap, shall we? In our last video we added the jump mechanics. Now there are a few things I'd like to do before moving forward and make our hero able to attack. First of all, let's take ledges. So, I mean, this is a ledge, right? So basically, when you step off a ledge, instead of falling, you get teleported automatically to the bottom of it. Like, if you go really fast, yep, it still, it still doesn't do it. So why is that? That's a relatively easy fix, and to fix it, let's go into our blueprint and double click our hero character. Now, here, if you select the character movement component, you can find here under character walking a variable called max step height. Usually this is used for when you have a character going up and down a step since like steps are have collision on their on each step wall. You want the character to be able to go up the steps and not get stuck in the collision. So this variable allows them to to decide what's the difference between the first step and the next step in height where you can move up up and down automatically. In our case it's set to 45 which is okay for a standard 3D character but we work at a much smaller scale in our uh, Pixel 2D project so 45 is way too big. If we reduce this to something like 10. I tested it before and 10 works for me, 10 might not work for you if your sprites are smaller so feel free to experiment with the right value. So if I make it 10 and then go here, jump off on the ledge and then there you go, it's it's working now just because it doesn't consider it a step anymore so it's just a normal ledge so you can fall down. Okay, That's one thing that I wanted to cover, the next thing is... What if, what if you want to double jump or triple jump or have a functionality that allows you to hold the jump button to increase your uh, jump velocity? Well, you can do all of that. First of all, let's take talk about double jumping. To double jump, open up the hero character blueprint again and under the add component select the hero character self and here you have the jump max count currently it's set to one well if you want to double jump you can set it to two compile and save and now you can double jump just press jump again while you're in the air again you're not limited to double jumping you can have you can even have triple jump there you go it's one, two, and three. Right, and now, as you might have noticed, above the jump max count, I'm just gonna reset it back to one, you have the jump max hold time. And you can hover up of it, over it, and it shows you the maximum time the jumpy can, can be held. So the longer you hold the jump key, the higher uh, your character will jump until it reaches that point. So, for example, if you put it one second you, you you can keep pressing the mouse but the jump button for up to one second and it's gonna increase the velocity until it reaches that cap so for example here it is if i'm if i just tap the jump button it, ju it jumps like this but if i hold the jump button it jumps considerably further and again you can use this in combination with the jump max count you can have it as high or as low as you want you can set it to zero so it's just like a binary it, you press jump once doesn't matter how much you hold it it jumps the same so that's consistent but it's really up to you depending on which type of game do you want to make before proceeding I'd like to do something about this map it's a bit barren so in order to quickly make it slightly better I'm just gonna go back to the tile maps and drag the demo tile back here and drag another one 
here like this there you go that should do it and I like to add the background just just because I don't like the super dark one we have so for this I'm just gonna use a cheat but again feel free to upload and integrate your own backgrounds but I already have a pretty large background from background from the demo level and I guess it's it's in final and it's in background and I have T background 00. zero. I'm just gonna make a duplicate of it by pressing Ctrl W. Okay, move it, uh, move it here into textures. Good, I have T background. Okay, I'm gonna create a sprite. Uh, move it into sprites. And then just uh, drag it here. I want to make it slightly bigger. So it occupies even bigger. There you go. And I'm just gonna move it a bit backwards so everything, everything appears in front of it. So uh, there you go. Now it's looking slightly better. And now let's remove the long jump since it slightly annoys me but let's keep the double jump since it's more fun that way cool awesome so now we have a character and they're double jumping and they're falling correctly and our level is a bit better let's move on to the next part now shall we and let's talk about variables for a bit so what are variables anyway? I'm sure most of you are familiar with the term, but for those that are not, as far as I'm concerned, variables are just uh, containers that uh, you can use to store information and most importantly modify that information. So for example, your char character self would be a variable because you need a way to store it and you also need to be able to modify it when they take damage or get healed. Same thing for damage, right? You might want to be able to switch up your player's damage depending on the context. Maybe they get a better weapon, maybe they get a temporary power-up temporary power or things like that. So. Variables are really really important and we will be using them a lot going forward Sorry if you heard popping in the video before I forgot to put on the microphone I don't even know what, what it's called the Shield thingy that prevents popping anyway YouTube is hard so moving on uh, There are a ton of different variables, but I'll just be referencing them as we use them so I'll show off a few of them now and for the rest when it's time for us to use them I'll explain them there so to create a new variable you just go to the variables tab here and just press the plus button on the variable so it creates a new variable and it has a default name let's call it test variable and now it's red so red means it's a boolean as you can see here a boolean variable we've already used those and it's the simplest variables it's just a true or a false so it only has two possible values true or false that's it there's nothing else and you already know how they work so in order to show off variables we can print them out so let's create a small uh, section of uh, logic that allows us to give a change the value of a variable and print out its value so first of all let's try with the let's try with the q and e right e key where is it uh, sometimes it's hard to find there you go and q key q is easier to find so let's say uh, when i press q i want to show the value of the current variable and when i press e i want to change the value of the current variable right so to 
show off the value of the current variable, I'm just gonna drag the test variable here, set get, and then I'm gonna use a print string. So basically this just prints out a string on uh, the game window, and you can write just whatever here. So for example, I'm gonna compile save and hit play, and if I press Q, as you can see it just print, prints hello. And the, long, the more I press it, the more it prints it, and it disappears after a while. You can customize the duration and the text color and whatever you want in here. So for this, we can just drag it into the string, and it's gonna convert it to a string. So basically, this only prints strings, but if you drag a variable directly into it, it's gonna convert the whatever the variable is into a string. So. If we do it now, we're gonna do false. It just prints false. Just because that's because the default value of a boolean when you create it is false. Now let's change it, shall we? So in our case, let's say we just want to flip the current value of the variable. So if it's true, we want it to become false, and if it's false, we want it to become true, right? That's quite easy, we're gonna use a branch, just keep, keep the B key pressed and then click on the canvas and the branch node will pop up. Alternatively you can just right click and just search for branch, but that's a nice shortcut. So let's say on the condition, so if the test variable is true then we want it to become false so to do that we're just gonna grab it again and then set it right so if it's true it's gonna become false and if it's false then it's gonna become true right let's hope so uh, save current just hit play and as you can see it's false and now i'm gonna press e and it's true. I'm gonna press E again, false, E again. I keep uh, alternating between E uh, and Q, so... As you can see, it's working. Now, one thing to note about variables, they last as long as the game does, so... Now that I've exited the game, the, the variable is still false. Even if I, for example, set it to E, press E, and now it's true exit the game, play again, it's still false. So in order for saving variables that are pers persistent between gameplay session, you need a save system which is a bit more advanced and we'll talk about it much much later. Cool, so let's move on to the next variable type. Just gonna delete this. And you can change the a variable after it's created just by going here where it says boolean and let's start, turn it into in, an integer. An integer is basically, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with integers, but it's a number that can be written without a fractional component. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 or minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, up to, I don't know, like I think the limit for integer is 64,000 and something, but I'm not sure. So now it's an integer. You can just get it. And the default value will be 0 for an integer. And you can change it here. So if you want the default value to be something else, like 25, you can change it. And it's going to be 25, as you can see. And you can do basic, basic mathematics with integers. So, for example, let's say I want to uh, multiply it with, uh, let's say I want to multiply it with itself, so it's, I'm raising it to the power of 2, so let's do that, I'm gonna have set test variable, and I can use the current value of the test variable, and just multiply and I have integer, multiplication of integer, and I can just add the test variable again. 
So now basically I'm setting the test variable to the value of the current test variable, which currently is 25, multiplied with the value of the current test variable, which is 25. But once that variable changes, this is gonna change as well. So this should get uh, this should get large pretty quickly. So for now it's 25. If I press E, it's 625, and if I press E again, it's 390,000. And if I press E again. So as I said, it has an upper limit and it just reached that. So be careful when using integers. If you want to work with long numbers, I think integer 64 is the better choice, but don't quote me on that. Cool. Uh, another type of variable that we can test out is float. Basically, this is a floating point variable and it's basically a real number so it has the number and you can also add that decimals in the back of it so you can have 1.25446 whatever it has again it has a limit of precision that can be changed i think in unreal as well but let's just go here and here and to modify it, let's just say I want to add, so add and it's float plus float so if I do this it's just gonna add one to it each time I press E, so it's pretty straightforward so uh, print it, it's 1.246 blah blah blah, I press E, it's 2.4, I press E again, 3, 5, 7, I pressed it a few times and as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. Now, these are the most common variables we'll be using. Another one that's common is, you can use any actor as a variable, so for example, if I have this, I can reference it and use it as a variable and maybe change some properties in it. Maybe I have another character, maybe I have a lot of things. So we'll be using actors as variables a lot. Now there's no really quick, easy way to show off how the actor variable works, but when we'll get to it, I'm gonna explain it a bit more. 